All right, welcome uh, to a special episode of 165 Entertainment. I'm Dixon. Here's Greg and Luby. We're going to be going over uh, E3 2017. Um, we're going to do a brief little Whoa. overview of the big games that caught Yeehaw. our eyes, the ones we liked, the ones we didn't like, who we thought stole the show, and what we're excited for. So I'll start it all off with a little bit of the Xbox um, side. Mm -hmm. The big games that kind of caught my eye were Fort uh, Fortnite, Days Gone, Assassin's Creed Origins, South Park, The Fractured Butthole, <laughs> um, <laughs> Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, and uh, I guess it would be Anthem was the name of it? I think so, yeah. Yeah. So those were the couple ones that caught my eye. Um, Fortnite seems like a lot, a very nice uh, multiplayer game that's a little bit of building, a little bit of everything there. The... The big one that's really catching my eye as of late, and I've never actually been a huge Marvel vs. Capcom fighter game because it's a lot of combo-centric, but with the storyline that's coming along with it and everything else, the graphics look fantastic with it. I think it's going to be like an excellent addition. Assassin's Creed Origins, I'm going to like keep it on the side for right now just because ever since like the assassin's creed i think going in from unity i haven't really been able to get back into the series it's not something that's really been um driving me in a lot um the one that i'm really disappointed in that's coming from the e3 one is fucking skyrim coming in again i don't know if it's on xbox one or whatever system it's on I am so done with Skyrim being released on shit, and they need to just stop doing that stuff. But it's virtual reality. I don't care what it is. It's all is. They're releasing it on the Switch. They're doing another remastered edition. Just come up with another freaking game. It's driving me insane. Those were the big ones I'm excited for, um, the Xbox one. Anthem, I'm on the fence. It kind of seems like a little bit... Um, Destiny, but a little bit more higher tech, if that makes sense. Like Destiny, where you can actually have jetpacks. I'm not sold on it. The trailer looks gorgeous, and everything, you know, in a in a vacuum looks fantastic. But after you empty the vacuum out onto the floor, we'll actually see what's going on with it. There's so many things, and that, that's the one thing that you have to do with everything at E3. You have to take it with a grain of salt. Just because just because it looks gorgeous there doesn't mean that it's all going to evolve out to that. And I kind of thinking that's what anthem is gonna be so i think i'm gonna wait a little bit longer um for those but those were like my big top ones for xbox a little bit low ones for xbox the ones that grabbed my attention the most is there any ones uh for the xbox area that you guys really oh, teacher one for yeah, teacher yeah yeah, 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 teacher, yeah yeah teacher crack down three oh crack down three yes yes it, from from the start of the very the very start of the trailer I don't know. Did you watch the trailer at all? No, I did not. The, I missed the it. first like five seconds of the trailer. It just pans over. Terry Crews is in the agency outfit, and the first thing he says is "motherfucker." <laughs> and he's he goes on the whole game. He's talking about throwing cars and throwing buildings at people. They're they're up in the ante on this game. Uh, Gibbo and I played this. Uh, I think we played both of them. Crackdown one and two, right? Or is it just one of them? But it's it's really. It, have you guys played? You yeah. the crackdown entries? Yeah. I remember, I remember watching you, and you got terrible ver – we both got actually got terrible vertigo because you were going up that building, and it was like the tallest building in the game. Yes, and then you just jump off it. You don't get hurt at all, but it's just a lot of fun to do. It's, it's one of those games that you can you could play it for seven hours and feel like you barely scratched the surface, or you'd be just as satisfied if you played the game for like ten minutes. It's just one of those little pick-me-up games. There's four player in this one? You saw four people? Yeah. Well, there's... <coughs> it, it would be great if they had four players. Because all the other games were strictly two-player. But even with just two-player, it was a lot of fun. So yeah, I'm, I'm hoping they allow four people in this one. But it's just... It, it looks... It's All the other games have been addictive and fun and really intense. And I, I have high hopes for this game. Okay. Uh, I have one. Uh, the Fractured Butthole. I have been looking forward to a new South Park game ever since I finished The Stick of Truth within, I don't know, like a week. Um, but, man, it, that, like just playing through The Stick of Truth, it was so much fun. It, yes. was like, it was like another South Park movie, really. But you, it was interactive, and you got to play it. And it was so much fun getting through like all those levels and beating the shit out of Kenny. Oh, I loved it. And then when you take into uh, account that they got the brand new game coming out, and it's been in development for, I don't know, like eight years. Something like that. Something like that. Um, I'm just really looking forward to it. 
oh, I can't. I Dude, can't. Stick of truth, like the the ending. Like I, yeah. I almost got emotional from it. Yeah, it yeah. was. But it was a great game. I gotta say, I never really got into Stick of Truth, um, just because with the South Park like genre where they were doing like the Lord of the Rings stuff, it wasn't something that caught my fancy. But like with now all it's superheroes, the, yeah, now it's superheroes, and it's it's so strange. But like when they had like that the old tune. South Park game that was the platformer where you were trying to get um, Cartman's hard drive back or whatever it was. Oh, from us, uh, from Scott Tinnerman. Yeah, exactly. That game was like cool. when you got to play as the superheroes in that, I loved it. And like a lot of the times where you have these games to where you can have so many different aspects to it. So like your Marvel versus Capcom or even with your Marvel Ultimate Alliance where you can have the different characters that you can incorporate in. I love those. So when it's actually coming in the South Park game, yeah. it's it's really exciting. They they really bring their A game. Like Matt Stone and Trey Parker, like they, they wrote this game. They had so much time. So it's I'm I'm expecting like exceptional work. I'm expecting to like not be able to put this game down after I start it. I think I I read this one report. This was maybe a couple of years ago that um, they were talking about if the South Park TV series were to ever end, they said they'd be just fine letting South Park live on as a video game yep. series. I remember reading about that. That sounds fantastic to me. I love it. All right, so going a little bit more to the PlayStation section. Now, granted, not um not many of us have PlayStations, but Greg has been probably the one with the most history actually going through and playing. Uh, yep. PlayStation game. So what are you excited for from the PlayStation era of E3? So then on the uh, PlayStation side of E3, I saw a trailer for Sp- uh, Spider-Man. Uh, <laughs> Spelunker. Spelunker. Spelunker Man. Spelunker Man. Uh, I saw a trailer for Spider-Man, and that definitely caught my eye. Um, you cannot discount God of War. God of War has been a staple of the uh, Sony community for quite some time. They haven't come out with a game since God of War 3, technically. So God of War 4 coming out with the new, I think it's Norse mythology. Um, sure. Yeah. Uh, with that coming out, man, that's going to be awesome. But my top game that's coming out, and it's been in developmental hell for so long, and it just makes my heart so filled with love, is uh, Kingdom Hearts. Mm-hmm. 3. 100%. 100%. Yeah, I remember you playing and the rest of the world. I had shot it's just seeing that trailer, and even though it was in Japanese, I think I don't know if they've come out that English trailer yet. Um, it was they had like subtitles, a lot of the big portions yep. of it, but it was absolutely fucking gorgeous. <laughs> um, and just like the little bit of mechanics that they were showing about the actual gameplay itself, yep. uh, I that was so. A lot of times I'll look into these um, newer games that release, and there are some games that make system buyers. So clearly from the time that we spent on this channel, Smash Brothers was clearly one of those ones where I went through and I bought specific specific systems just to go through and play that game. Yeah. Kingdom Hearts 3 was going to be one of those to where I would have actually went through and possibly bought a PlayStation for it. However, the other big part of it that <laughs> I didn't find out till recently is they're yep. actually releasing it for PlayStation and the Xbox One. I still might buy a PlayStation. So I... <laughs> <laughs> hey, it, it's it's still fine. Um, I will say that out of the PlayStation R, there wasn't a lot of the games that were revealed at A3 that made me like, I have to go buy a PlayStation for this game. Granted, they had some announcements about The Last of Us 2 and like yeah. a little bit of that. Yep. And then that uh, that new zombie, what's that new zombie game where they just keep showing trailers for it and it's like at least, there's at least like 150, 200 zombies that's, on screen. That's um that's Days Gone. So okay. that's available for both systems too. Oh, is that available yeah, for if, both systems? If I'm not mistaken <laughs> on that one. But um, the being that now that Kingdom Hearts is spanning a little bit, I mean obviously they had, they had some time in the Nintendo systems, but yeah. We won't go into that. Yeah, uh, that the the, the the thirteen game carryover. Yeah, and the like random word generator that's uh, yeah. making the names for the games. But yeah. I'm very excited about that to actually be able to get my hands on that game specifically and absolutely run with it. Yeah, I am so stoked about it. Overall, though, I gotta say, um, if we're comparing the two thus far, granted we're going to go through all three big systems. Um, PlayStation was a little bit lacking for me. I yeah. did like that it's a Spider-Man exclusive on there. Yep. Is it enough for me to go through and jump to Team PlayStation? Mm-hmm. Not in particular. The one thing that, um, like, Xbox has a lot of games that aren't necessarily exclusives, but I already have the system. They did offer up the new Xbox One X, X which 
I mean, I might upgrade my system just because it seems to be, you know, slacking a little bit recently. With all the specs and everything on it and have to be in 4K, it's not selling me over quite yet for 500 I think it's one of those ones, once they release it, I'll wait till the next Black Friday and get it for super cheap. Yeah. But the one that, well, th- this will obviously be my vote for when we come to it, that we're getting to is the third system that I, you know, I had a lot of excitement for was Nintendo. So going to our Nintendo guy, Mr. Luby, tell us a little bit about uh, what you saw, what you liked, what you didn't like. Uh, well, arguably, um, I think Nintendo may have won E3. Possibly. Yeah. I, I think I would actually I would say that, too. I was going to actually go through the end and say a vote, but before I even get into Nintendo, I would say Nintendo didn't win E3. It was uh, it was kind of a close race with some of the exclusives and the systems and everything like that, but um, the one the, I have one little disappointment and little, you know... Gripe. Gripe about it, but I won't go into that until we get to the good stuff. So let's hear about the good stuff. The... Probably the best takeaway from all this is Nintendo is finally showing the Metroid series some love. And I I think it's in a response to probably the last two major Metroid releases, which was the other M, and that was way back in the Wii days, like 2010 or something like that, where they they turned Samus into, I guess, kind of a whiny, cowardly little person. The The game itself was actually really good. I enjoyed it, at least. But then a lot of fans didn't like it. And then the last one that they made was... Metroid Prime Federation Force for the 3DS, where Samus, as far as I know, was not in the game. It was kind of like one of these multiplayer shooters where it's like, uh, look, there's a soccer mode or there's which, a weird shooter mode or something like was that. Was she on like Star Trek? Federation? Federation Force. Yeah. Federation so Force. So it was, it's, it's like there's this, the, there's this group of soldiers basically in the Metroid realm. And even though I've never played the game, I know almost nothing about it, but I'm assuming that it's just. This group of soldiers that you're following throughout this okay. game, but it, people hated it because they've been looking for like a real Metroid legit game and en- entry into the Metroid series. So yeah. they so they announced two games. One of them is a 3DS remake of Metroid Two, which I I, I want to say was just for the Game Boy, possibly. I you know that it's it's really old. It's like early '90s kind of game. Yeah. Um, but- but it looks very nice. Oh, they 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 completely spruce it up. It's beautiful. And then they announced uh, Metroid Prime Four, hmm. which that's from the first person series of games. Which all three of the previous releases have all just been top notch, critically acclaimed. And so, it's that's a huge sigh of relief for people who have been looking for you know some more love for the for the Metroid series. Um, one of the things that I didn't like, and it, maybe it's too soon for me to say, is this this Mario and Rabbids. <sighs> I'm. That was one of the ones I'm. I'm kind of the f- on the fence about. Like, if, like, don't get me wrong. I hate. I hate the rabbits. Like, They're I feel the fucking Kmart minions. They're yeah. just yeah. stupid. They're I hate them. like the. It's just so annoying. They're not <laughs> funny. They're not amusing. I get it. It's for like made for like a kid type yeah, genre. Yeah, they just but run around and scream and the, have buck teeth. Mario's been around for so many years. They shouldn't focus on kid genres. They should focus on like keeping the adults interested because that is your target audience. That's almost. true. But h- here's the thing about it is that if you actually went through and watched the gameplay, it's not like the other rabbits games where it's like, hey, you throw plungers at each other and they're like little tiny mini games. It's yeah. kind of like a. I don't want to... It's almost like a Fire Emblem-esque... They, they compared it to that, really? to that game series XCOM. Yeah, that's... that's really? Ex- yeah, that's yes. exactly what it looks like. It's like you... you you turn you, based. You tell Mario. You, so it's sort of turn based. You tell Mario. It's like go. You direct them to hide behind this thing and then peek behind the corner and shoot a rabid version of Luigi, like a rabid dressed up. He's got like a Luigi hat and like yeah. a painted on mustache. That see, that's that's the thing. At first, when I saw it, when I first saw the title release, I'm like, "Fuck this! I'm gonna hate this." But then actually watching a little bit of the gameplay, it's like. This is not what I was expecting at all. So maybe I got to give it the benefit of the doubt for that. Don't knock it till you try it. Yeah, maybe. I, 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 don't know. I think that's what if the, if they go through and they um, do like a lot of other games that have done and released like a little demo version of it. Yeah, I think that's going to do them a lot of justice. Just because f like I don't think Rabbits is a title that people are rushing to go buy no. the actual game. But if you actually show them that they can do it a little bit more seriously, and especially with the Nintendo franchise behind them. Yeah, like and especially Mario being. P- and everything like that. Yeah, especially being tired of Mario. I think that's going to help them out a lot. And there's a lot of games that they throw out demos first, and it helps them out significantly. Yep. 
um, to actually bring people in. Like right now, um, another thing to go is if you guys haven't done it yet, there's actually a demo for Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite uh, Story Mode. Go out, download it, give it a try. Um, just did it today. I haven't actually gone through and played the game itself, but um, it looks fantastic. And that's and that those type of things are going to give me a small taste and actually let me go into and see if I want to go through and try and play this game. And I think it's weird that companies don't do that as much anymore. A lot of stuff where it's like, you can get the beta if you already pre-ordered the game, which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. But Are, I'm not are we going to see a beta buyer or a beta? Yeah. Hmm. yeah. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> But uh, go out, give that a try, and I think if they do that with the rabbits, it's going to do a lot of help to it, the system itself. It'd be it'd be nice, I guess. Um, the I have a couple of like. Ex- do do you have more? I have I have a lot of excitement for the Nintendo. Like, well, there's there's the other part, and it's th- there's not a whole lot to talk about it right now. But an, it's another promise that Nintendo made, which is really cool, is that they're adding a staple Pokemon game. Exclusive for the Switch. That's, oh yeah, I, I heard about that. Yeah, because yeah. every, everyone was thinking that they were going to add uh, Pokemon Stars, like like people titled it Pokemon Stars themselves, mm-hmm. and they thought it was going to be you know how they w- they would have red, blue, and then yellow, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, gold, silver, and uh, crystal. So they thought Stars was going to be that version. They would just move it over to the Switch, but allegedly they're just going to make a Switch, not, maybe not a Switch exclusive, but one designed mostly for the Switch, a Pokemon game. And I think that's pretty cool to that's be able to nifty. to have both a home and travel version of the Pokemon game. I agree. So, I don't know if you guys have seen this post, but I think I saw it on uh, Imgur. Uh, he, have you seen the post where it says, if they could just take this game, and it's a picture of Skyrim, and this these games, and it's a picture of uh, red, blue, and yellow, and combine them, yeah, you would end the world. I think if they stopped do it, like if they took Skyrim and stopped doing the fucking remakes for it, <laughs> and just put actual Pokemon and made it to where it's like them combined. A first person Pokemon game? Hire, hire Bethesda and I don't. I, I mean, that just that just makes sense to me. Um, but no, that is something that's exciting. Um, Fire Emblem Warriors is another one I'm super excited for. I've been a Dynasty Warriors fan since I think Dynasty Warriors Two. So that was back on the original PlayStation, I think. Yep, so way back 1. when. So I think I bought every single one since. <laughs> unfo- uh, I didn't buy a Wii U, so I didn't get to play Hyrule Warriors myself. I did get to play it on Luby System, and it's a fantastic game it's yes, one it of is. those ones that you can just sit there and play for hours and hours just beating up huge amounts of people mm-hmm. and fire emblem is um a game that i've taken back to whenever we were able to whenever they had english versions of the game like back then is when i started playing and i've been loyal to it ever since so i'm super excited to actually see those worlds come together because it just makes so much sense um, the original Fire Emblems were a lot of spear and sword users, and mm-hmm. to s- see that it took them this long to do a Fire Emblem version of it is like kind of strange to me, but at the same time, it's, I'm glad that they waited and gave it a little try with Hyrule Warriors. I'm super excited for that. It looks gorgeous. I like that it's going to be on a Switch. Um, that along with some of the other games like the actual um, Breath of the Wild and all that, those are definitely system buyers. So as soon as it gets to that point where that's going to be released, I'm going to have to invest in the Switch. I'm not against getting one right now, but I was very shy about doing it for the Wii U, but I'm going to do it for the Switch. There's no doubt in my mind about it. So Xbox, uh, this is actually a side note, Xbox announced the Xbox One X. Yes. Did PlayStation announce anything, though? Play, I don't. I PlayStation actually. PlayStation Four Pro. Uh, so okay. They they've been doing like the comparison of the specs and the difference between the PlayStation Four and the PlayStation Four uh, Pro, Pro is not as significant as, as the, the as X the X is yeah. to the S. Got so many freaking letters. And <laughs> yeah. um, they just did Xbox Two. Another thing that um, it's good that you brought up, and this is something that it's not necessarily new games per se, but it's something that Nintendo announced that it was actually very interesting, is they're um, releasing a lot of like party games for the Switch itself, one of them being Rocket League. Yes. And <laughs> the awesome thing about that actually going Shut on up, the Caboyo. Switch... That the exciting thing about that going on the Switch is number one, it's a fantastic game for you to like go on, be on the go and just real quick put it down, play a match or two against a friend or anything like that, and keep it going. But the thing that they're doing is they're actually allowing, just like they did with PC to Xbox, they're doing with Switch to Xbox too. Is that you can cross platform. So if you buy Rocket League for the Switch, you can play against your Xbox buddies, you can play against your PC buddies. And it's I, I'm I'm very excited to see that that's becoming 
a little bit more prevalent in the gaming world, that they're allowing for these titles to be cross-platform and let you play with other people because, yes, you, ultimately you want to get people to buy a console, but at the same yeah. time, like, you want to get a little bit of that, uh, <coughs> like, excitement for your game one way or the other. So to be doing it to where you have that set up for these cross-platform plays is fantastic. Granted, Rocket League isn't the most um, highly technical game, so, like, to have it for um, your games, like, say, I don't know, uh, Call of Duty to go across platforms. I don't. I couldn't imagine what that would incorporate technically wise. Um, and you can't do first person shooters versus computer people or PC people. But just to see that there's some effort being made in that is really cool to me. And it's sometimes the simplest games that are always the most fun. Mm-hmm. Smite, Rocket League, uh, Big Bumpin. Big way Bumpin. Back in the day. If uh, you've ever played Big Bumpin, whoa. That is an awesome game. I love my, it. My disappointment for E3 was that there wasn't a big bump, big bump in the re- release. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I read somewhere, and I could be wrong, um, but I think it said for the Rocket League Switch they were going to have like Nintendo exclusive skins. So that just imagine true. playing Mario Kart, a Mario it, it, Kart skin yeah, on Rocket the, League. That would awesome. And they're not only having custom skins, but they're having custom vehicles just for the Switch. Nice. Um, so when you go through and buy that. Uh, another one, I'm... Excited for I, I'm kind of taking over the Nintendo part, but there's, there's been so many Dude, things that I've been excited about. There is a new Kirby coming out. I love the Kirby series. Now, what the cool thing that they're doing about this one is similar to how they did way back when Superstar was on the Super Nintendo, is that um, you can play as Kirby and then like you do you get your power, then you can turn your friend into the enemy version of it, and it comes along with you as a companion up to four people. So, whereas they had the other games where you could play as Kirby, Meta Knight, and DDD, but, like, the DDD and uh, Meta Knight couldn't really get any of the powers. It was only Kirby that could get the powers, so it was kind of sad in that way. Now, you're pl- you can work it to where the people you're playing with, up to four people, can actually have the powers themselves. So, it's pretty cool and pretty exciting. It's, it's probably not the top one for most people, but I was excited to see that they're having a Kirby for the Switch. I, I like that they're having it too. It, it. I'm, I'm hoping because one of my favorite entries in the Kirby series is actually uh, Crystal Shards, and the way in in this new Kirby Switch game, it looks like you can combine the powers. That was one of my favorite elements of uh, Crystal yeah. Shards was that you needed to combine elements to reach certain mm-hmm. uh, areas in the different levels, and they would kind of color code whatever walls or obstacles or whatever that was in your way. And I think that's a better way of actually incorporating new things into Kirby. Granted, there's been a lot of interesting. Um, mechanics since then, like they had um, the triple deluxe was actually kind of cool, where you had the super inhale powers. Yes. Um, but then recently they did like the robot one, where robot. you're in ro- yeah, where you're in ro- robot suits and the robots get powers. <laughs> it's yeah, it was an interesting idea, but overall I think this one that they're coming up with for the Switch is what they should really be going for, which is taking the good parts of Crystal Shards and making it yeah. for people to where you don't just have to play as DDD with the hammer. You can be the fire. You yeah. can be the Chili Willy it's and like, all those. It's things. like a new throwback. Yes. Chili yes. Willy. That's what the that's what the name of one of the <coughs> little assists are. And there's the one with the hammer. His name is Bonkers and stuff like that. There's a lot. They got a lot of real strange names. Go back and watch it. Sparky Junior. <laughs> weird, weird ass shit. Um, but I will say the thing that I was excited for most, and after seeing the trailer for Nintendo and pretty much all V3, was Super Mario Odyssey. Woohoo! Holy shit, that Ah, was... Because when they first announced in that that they were coming out with another, like, essentially Mario 64 before the Switch, that was already something that was real cool. It looked fantastic. It looked beautiful. But the big thing that caught my eye was this new mechanic that they're incorporating with it is where you have this hat, which is like a magical hat or whatever, and initially they didn't give too much details about it. You can use it to attack people or help jump across gaps. I'm like, okay, that's not really an interesting aspect. But what you have it now is you can somehow toss your hat at any enemies or allies and you'll turn in to that. So a section that they showed is like you can actually, there's a T, there's a legitimate t-rex level where there's a huge t-rex you can throw your head at it and you you will become mario t-rex it's just (laughs) the goofiest shit around but it's so awesome because there's also like there's gameplay mechanics to it that play out very well they have like little tanks you become mario tanks so it incorporates a different way to fight a boss battle um to get to certain parts of the level you got to become 
Bullet Bill Mario or Hammer Bros Mario or Goomba Mario, and it's just it's really cool to see that That's because a, sad life. <laughs> a lot of times what they've been doing with the games is that they have oh it's a new hat and you have that power for a little bit and that's what you're gonna go with and that was amazing when they first came out with it when they came out with 64 and they had you were metal mario you were flying mario you were invisible mario it was something that was cool that they had in the 3d platforms granted they also had like tanuki mario and all those things but in the 3d world it was really cool to see that then they incorporated in a lot of like the 3D worlds and all those where they had different powers like you could be a cat. Cat Mario. Cat Mario and all those things. Meowrio. Meowrio. It was interesting because uh, you, can incor- you could have those things, but they were very specific to finding that <coughs> box and finding those things. With the hat, it's kind of like something you can do on the fly and you adapt to a situation. It's something that you haven't quite seen in a Mario game, and that's why it was really – something that caught my eye it excited me the game looks absolutely gorgeous and it's like we um we've had like mario galaxy which did a nice little turn on things and played right. with the mm-hmm. motion controls and everything like that but i don't know it's just something about the odyssey it looks so great it looks so, it, it's got me very excited for it and it's showing that nintendo is not playing games when it comes to this new system with the Wii U, it was a very soft launch, and a lot of people were like, what the hell is this? And they're like, oh, you got a new tablet for your Wii? No, this is a whole new system. With the Switch, they went the complete opposite direction. Be like, bam, here's a new system. Bam, here's a brand new, ridiculously good uh, Zelda game. Now we're going to release one that looks to be a, a fantastic Mario game. To start off with putting st- everything strong titles first is a great thing for Nintendo. Nintendo's going... Uh Going hard. Yeah. Trying, I mean, they're, it's yeah. not even they're keeping up with Sony and Microsoft. They're they're almost blowing them out of the water at this point. I mean, you got a lot of uh, heavy hitters and you know for the PlayStation and the Xbox, but I don't think anybody's more excited than what's coming out for Nintendo. Which, I think which that's, is I can't believe that we're at a point that we're uttering that phrase because so long Nintendo has been just dragging their feet behind Xbox yeah. and PlayStation, and now it's like. A switch is a legitimate system. You want to go. It's like when they released the Wii. Like motion yeah. controls were the big thing, and everyone was rushing out to get a Wii. You couldn't find them in any stores. That's essentially what they have for the Switch. Granted, it might be the whole marketing scheme that they did with Amiibos, which are <laughs> fucking yeah. Amiibos, where they're Amiibos. like, we're gonna release ten in your state. Go find them. Good luck, fuckers. Um, <laughs> but like with the Switch now, it's a different story because they're not making it to where it's exclusive like you're just getting a little figurine and you're busting your ass for it but it's like yeah. a system that's shown this new aspect with the carry along and everything with that and now they're incorporating these new games it's going to be something amazing yeah so now xbox and playstation are kind of hot behind the ball because i mean the switch came out with this and it's you have it handheld you switch to a tv and it's it's almost equal graphics i mean yeah. It's it's, it's it's impressive. Yeah, I, so. I, don't, I don't know if I would say it's equal graphics because seeing some of the gameplay for the new like Xbox no. and for the PlayStation, <laughs> they're they're like pristine like 4K stuff. But I think that no, I, I mean between like the handheld and the television. Yeah, yeah like yeah. when you oh, switch yeah, back definitely. and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah not, that's it's, that's what I'm talking about. Xbox and PlayStation, they're still. I mean, graphically, I mean, they're they're some of the best. But that also comes with the downfall of performance issues. Yeah, because they, they we we actually saw a. Um, video that touched on it and said that what you see at E3, do not expect that to be the final product. Yeah, and, and yeah. that's where like it's a good thing because Nintendo realizes that they're slacking behind on that, yep. and at this point it's going to be a huge catch-up game, so they're getting just to the point where they can make it just on the right level to where people aren't going to be completely disappointed with the graphics, but they're going to go through and do these new things like making it a handheld and a home system in one, yep. and they're knocking out the part with that. But, Luby, there was something I remember, because we were talking about this briefly yeah. the other day when we heard about it. Um, I'm 100% in for Odyssey, but you have some reservations about it. It's, it's, it's just my own minor little quirk. It's just something about seeing cartoonish Mario standing next to just regular-looking humans and a normal-looking T-Rex. And... Because at one point we were talking about uh, Mario's hat possessing people. There's just like a really quick clip of Mario's hat possessing just some Human. normal guy in a suit. And something about that just, I don't know what it is. It's, it reminds me of um, some of the Sonic games that have put uh-huh. him in the realm of regular people. And I don't know, it just 
oh, I just yeah. get this weird, weird <laughs> like, little gut feeling when like, I like that one where he made out with like a human or something. Yeah, like some that. weird princess or something like yeah. that. And then yeah. Sonic Adventure, so, so, well, Sonic Adventure One was a good game, but still, something about seeing him. It's like here's a hotel and here's like a regular girl sunbathing, and here's a blue hedgehog in shoes, fucking running in circles around her. What the <laughs> fuck is happening? So it's it's just it it holds me back just ever so. It's just a visual thing because the game itself looks spectacular it's gonna be a lot of fun it's and that's the difference between i mean that's when when you talk about like graphics i mean i mean uh nintendo focuses more on like mario and sonic yeah. well let I me mean, not sonic anymore but um where they it's more like cartoony when then sony and microsoft have like the whole thing and yeah, the, realism. the realism and they're kind of trying to combine them that's that's where you kind of get run into a little bit of trouble it's, it's just a weird little i don't know okay so the two things that I have left were the things I'm kind of sad that weren't at E3. Granted, they might have been long shots, but I was still hoping for them. I was really, really hoping for Smash Brothers 4 mm-hmm. to make a port onto the Switch. Um, I was like, I didn't go out and get the Wii U right away. I actually went and got the 3DS for the Smash Brothers. But I feel like this, you, there is a significant difference between the console version and the 3DS version. Got- and you can just feel it and j- actually go through and get, like, the nice GameCube controller in your hand to play Smash. Um, it really kind of killed me that they haven't done that yet. I figured, like, that would be something that they could mention real quick in the Direct. And, I, it, I mean, if I wasn't already on the, uh, in the line for Switch, if I would have saw that, like, I would have... I would have left after the E3 presentation. Yeah, like this this video wouldn't line. be happening right now. No, yeah, I, no. I wouldn't have. I would be waiting in line to find some Switch anywhere that I could. <laughs> um, the other one that I was so excited for, and granted, you know, it might be something that comes. They might wait till after, was Borderlands 3. There's been so much talk about <laughs> it, and there's been so much hype that comes up for it. I get it. I'm fine with them taking a little bit longer to make sure that they have a finalized product. But I am so excited for that to be, especially on a next-gen system, um, because the pre-sequel and everything, it didn't really get, use the full capabilities of being on an Xbox One. I would love for that to be, like, one of the premier games that they have for, like, the Xbox X to use, like, the yeah. 4K. Um, if that's the case, then I will run out to a store and immediately exactly. buy an Xbox One. Yeah. And I was very excited to have that game be there. Um, Borderlands 2 is something that's very precious to pretty much everybody on this channel. Yeah. Um, it's a fan. It was a fantastic game. It was easily excel- Top 10. Yeah, it yeah, easily no. excelled over its predecessor. Not saying that the first one wasn't good, but the second one took everything that they liked, you liked about the first one and improved upon it, it over and over and over again. And I was so excited when they, um, especially they had a lot of people from Gearbox showing like clips of an engine that they were working on and the yeah. Borderlands world. So I'm thinking, oh, they're just teasing us, and here comes the big reveal at E3. So I was bummed about that. However, like I said, they were big expectations that probably, you know, the, the, they might not be far away, but I was hoping that would be at E3. Do you, you guys have any of those? But you know what? It's just to touch on the Borderlands thing. It's just like Kingdom Hearts. They don't want to put something out that's half-assed. Yeah. You want to put something out that's going to blow away its predecessor. Oh, that is full true. Full-assed. Full-assed. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, full-assed, half-assed, whatever. Did you guys have anything that you expected to see and didn't uh, have show up or wanted a little bit more info about? Hmm. I don't know. You know what? I, something I didn't see is did they un, uh, unveil? Unveil? Unveil. No veal. They took like away the veal. Like that baby, baby cow or whatever. They, Unveil. They took away the veal. Did they reveal anything about the new Arkham game? No. Nope. Absolutely not. That is something I am kind of interested in because I don't. I I think I remember them talking about it was going to be another uh, game based on Batman. But after I saw the trailer for Spider Man, which I forgot to touch on, where it was literally like the Arkham series, where Spider Man was just beating the shit out of people and using his spidey sense and jumping around all over the place. That's something I probably would have loved to see uh, gameplay of or see what they're going to do with it. Because Origins was kind of like a... Uh, Sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm petting the table. You're really excited about Spider-Man, aren't you? <laughs> uh, yeah, one more thing that we didn't touch on was uh, Star Wars. Oh, God! So, Battlefront 2. I am a terrible fan. So, okay, I'm, I'm, t- I'm torn about it. We went through and got the first Battlefront, and it was one of those games that 
I felt like everybody. the first Battlefront, as in like a couple years ago, yeah, not the not the PlayStation two, the PlayStation two original ones no, no, were no. amazing. They're still good. I'm, I'm not. I'm no, no. I still I, play those. I would not speak harshly of those games in any way, shape, or form. But the newer one, I felt like yeah. it was one of those games like everybody was in for a month, and then literally I couldn't get it until a month after. Went on there, and there was probably like seven people in all of matchmaking worldwide. And the DLC co- content and all those things, they had a lot of it things. It was a letdown. It, it was a letdown. And, yes, this trailer looks fantastic. They had Darth Maul and Rey and Kylo Ren and Yoda where you could fight as all of them. And they had the beautiful scenery from all three eras of the Star Wars franchise. Roger, roger. Um, you can play as the droids. There's so many different things that they had in there that looked fantastic. I am just a like hurt lover of the series because I don't know if it's something that I want to rush out and get and um, be yes. like be burned on because of what happened with the first Battlefront. And it's not like they have a new developer. And it's not like they have something brand new. It's still Dice doing it. Yeah. It's still and like okay, here's the aspects that we saw, we heard you didn't like in the last game, so we're improving. It's like that should have been something you did before you released the first game. Not oh, now we're gonna learn from the second one. Well, they they took it more as like a battle. Uh, what was the other? What was the game that? Battleborn? Battlefield. Battlefield. Yeah. They used it. They used the battlefield format, um, and they thought that was, yeah, they thought that was gonna get them by. But I mean, when you when you try to like take. Battlefront 1 and 2 from the PlayStation 2 and then just cut out all the single player and campaign mode and all the extra stuff and try to just make this a strict online only like co-op kind of thing it just it kind of fell away but I they announced it was single player and I the, think yeah, there, they did is, announce there's a story mode I, I I think that is going to be enough for me to go out it's and, from, it's and from get the it. side of the empire and this is yes. officially going to be Star Wars canon yes oh, awesome so but, they're not taking it lightly. And at all. I, I just remembered something else I was going to talk about. But I, like the thing is, is that um, I feel that the games that they say, oh, we're going to take like here's the Battlefield engine. Okay, now let's throw Star Wars people in it. Now pay sixty dollars for it. Yep. That's not what I'm super stoked about. Now going back to just like Fire Emblem Warriors, it's not just oh here's Dynasty Warriors Fire Emblem characters. There's actually different aspects that are intermingling the games. Yes, at a there are level. like strategic tweaks made. And that's exclusively what, for this game. And that's what you have to do when you combine these games is that you can't just say here's uh, here's Battlefield but now you have skins. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's just Star a, Wars. like a makeover. That, that that's what like ultimately disappointed me about the last game and the token the token system and everything like that. There wasn't a lot token. of things there wasn't a lot of things that kept bringing token me back them. and especially considering that everyone left this like the game almost a cu- like a couple months after yeah. the game was released and I I'm worried about that, but we'll see how it goes. We'll see if new footage yes. is released, and we'll go from in there. Um, I know with the first uh, one, which is actually the one thing that I did like that Battlefront did, was that they released a small times like you can play free this weekend. And I love that there's some games that are doing that. They did it with um, that. They did it with Gears of War. They did mm-hmm. it with Battleborn, which they did it with a lot of different games where you have this weekend you can play it for free and you can give it a try and you can help and be beta testers right. and you yeah. don't ne- and some of them it's like you don't have to pre-order it we're just doing it to everybody in the Xbox community <coughs> do that with Battlefront 2 I'll give yep. it a try maybe you'll suck me back in um, one thing I did want to touch on was there's there's three games that I want to um, get the midnight release of and uh, check our channel when it, they do come out, so we'll probably live stream, and I'll probably play forever, um, is uh, Fractured Butthole, and then Kingdom Hearts. Mm-hmm. But the third game, and I played the first one, and I still have to finish it, and I love it, is uh, Shadow of War. Yeah. yeah. Middle Earth Shadow of War. I, I watched the first couple trailers that came out for that, and just like the gameplay background, and I immediately was just head over heels for it. No. There's a it, lot of things out like there's a lot of things out there with that game itself and it's a lot of thing like the what they call it the nemesis system the nemesis system which is really it's a real cool thing so like a quick <laughs> synopsis of it is what you do is you're trying to recruit people to your army which are orcs and what happens is is you can call them into certain battles so say you're about to get your ass kicked in a certain battle you call in your one orc uh, commander to come and help you but then you just dip because you're about to die and that person dies in there well now that person leaves your side and becomes your enemy and they remember that stuff and they say hey um, remember when you left me to die? Well, now I'm gonna get you oh, back for it. Shit, the really Nemesis cool. system, the Nemesis uh, when it came out in the first game was like groundbreaking because they had, 
I think there are six levels of orcs. And the top, in the first one, there was um, five, like, war chiefs. And then you had at least, like, 30 other orcs that you had to recruit, in a, in a way. And it was so cool because it was exactly like Don was talking about, is every action that you do has an effect on the whole entire environment. So if you do, um, if you kill like a war chief, you can promote one of your guys up there, or you know you could recruit. <coughs> you can any, recruit coughs. Yeah, you can recruit coughs. But I'm really looking forward to um, Shadow of War. It's just yeah. the graphics look amazing, the gameplay looks phenomenal, yeah. and it's going to be humongous. Yeah, it's going to be a, like whatever the first one was, at least double fold. <coughs> the amount of people that you can recruit, a lot of customization that's in there, so you can the castles and every fort yep. you can take over, you can customize and deck out and then put one of your commanders to hold on to it. Like Assassin's and, Creed 4? Yeah. Well, eh. Like Black Flag. Yeah, like it was like that except a little bit more than, hey, watch this place and then every yeah. once in a while you go fight three guys and that's the end of it. It's a little bit deeper than that and that's something I'm really excited for. So, yeah, that's that's what E3 was. Those were the big titles that we have. Granted, there wasn't everything that we could cover in here, but these were the ones that stuck out to us the most in a positive way or sometimes, unfortunately, in a negative way. Um, so, yeah, that's all I got. You guys got anything else? Uh, Sonic Forces looks cool. That's all I got. That's all. That's it. Greg? I like video games. Okay, good. Good. Um, so, yeah, that's what we got. So we'll be checking out a lot more of these titles. We'll be doing commentaries on the stuff when the games come out, when actual demos release of it. So stay tuned. Come back to our channel. Check some of these things out. Once again, this has been Dixon, Luby, and Greg, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.